To make our roses, we are going to need two pieces of construction paper, a template, scissors, and tape or your choice of glue. So the first thing to do is take your scissors and cut out your template. This template is thanks to thecraftpatchblog.com. Um, you can find written directions as well as the a downloadable template should you ever need one. I still have all of my original cardstock templates. I can throw these in an envelope and save them for the next batch of flowers. Both of your pieces of construction paper and fold them in half lengthwise. So you get a very long skinny rectangle. And then fold them into thirds like you were mailing a letter. Uh, my favorite way is to kind of make a tube. Then you can kind of squish and adjust as needed. And then finally, just push down. Okay, mine did not go entirely according to plan. So you can also do it this way. However, you normally get things folded in two thirds. That's how you want to do it. Okay, so I've got mine folded into thirds. There's an important way you want to hold this. This side has the fold in the paper. This side does not. So all of these little pieces are separate. You want the side that is not your folded side on the bottom. So if you watch my hand, I'm holding the unfolded side. And now I've got that side on the bottom. I'm going to take my largest petal and I'm going to put it right on the edge and then using a pen or a pencil just trace around it. Um, I do recommend using a pencil and a light touch so that you can erase any pencil marks later if you need to. I'm using a pen to make sure it shows up on camera. So now, because I have my open side on the bottom, none of my flower petals will be attached. I put my petal right in the middle so all of my folds are along the edges and I'll have six separate petals. But I only need to cut them once to have my six petals. Do the same thing with your other piece of paper, which I will do, I'm just using this to demonstrate, and you can fit your medium and your small petal on the same piece. Maybe even flip one over so that you have a little bit more play and wiggle room. And just do the same thing, trace around them, cut them out so that you have six of each petal. You can see that for this piece it didn't quite fold exactly on the line so I did draw in my end piece and matched it up on the um, shortest page that I could see so that all of none of my petals would be that couple millimeters um, too small. Not that it really matters, it's not going to hurt anything in the grand scheme of the, flat of the project. All right, so as you're cutting, you want to make sure that you only cut along the lines because we are going to use the um, leftover paper for our centers. Before you separate all of your petals, you want to put your template back on and cut along the line. So I'm just going to cut 
a little slit. I have my feet. And now I can store my template and work with my petals. Do the same with the other two sizes. So you want to open both of your oops, open both of your pieces and determine which one has the most blank space available. So I could use either one of these. I'm going to use this one. Take all of your centers, find spaces for them. It doesn't matter if they are on a crease, although with the inner circle it's small enough you could um, place it so that it doesn't have a crease. Um, depending on how you cut, possibly you could do the same with the middle circle. Yeah, I have just enough room to put my middle circle on without a crease. And then I can put my outer circle. That's going to have a crease down the middle, but that's going to be fine. I'm just going to trace and cut all three of these. So I have six large petals and a large base, six medium petals and a medium base, six small petals and a small base. And I just realized three exclamation points. Now, my preferred medium, especially for beginners learning how to do these flowers, they're really easy once you get the hang of it, but the um, you, you do have to practice. Um, so I would recommend using cheap construction paper or printer paper for your first few flowers, um, just until you get the hang of it. And then once you know what you're doing and you get the feel for it, you can move on to more expensive papers like this lovely um, sheet of scrapbook paper or heavier cardstock. All right, so I'm gonna start with the large petals. But we are going to do pretty much the same thing to all three groups. And I recommend either scotch tape or um, hot glue because um, they are both repositionable to a certain extent while you're working. And you c they also dry um, the quickest. So with the scotch tape, it is possible to peel it up and move things around a little bit. And with the hot glue, at least with the low temperature hot glue, that I do recommend for all projects um, because I tried using high temperature hot glue with this project and burnt my fingers a couple of times. Um, but anyway, with the hot glue, you do have a little bit of working time, so you can kind of, if you stick something down, you can kind of wiggle it over before the glue fully hardens. So either individually or as a group, you're going to want to curl your leaves. It doesn't matter which side you curl them from. Um, you can either roll them up just on their own, or even just a little bit of a curve, or you can take a pen or a marker and use that. Oops, my liner coming out just a little bit uneven. I like to roll mine down to about the top of the slit and then just let them go. You don't need them to be coiled, you just need a curve. Now we get to the, the slightly tricky bit. Now, you don't have to do this. I've done it just so that um, we can you can see on camera. We are going to take our little feet where the slit is and we're gonna cross our legs. Now, in this case, if I cross L over R, uh, which from my perspective is left and right, if you look at a side view, I've made the letter C. It curves all the way around in a little arch. 
Now, if I cross right over left, you can see that the paper is bending the other direction. And I have made an S. So I start over here and I follow it around into a little S. It's very subtle, but you can see the difference um, in your curves going different directions. So you want to make sure you have an S curve, not a C curve. And you want to cross it about halfway. Um, actually, for the large leaves, you want to cross it maybe a third of the way. A third to a quarter of the way. You want them to be a little bit more flat. Tiny little piece of tape is actually more than I need and stick your feet together do that for all six petals so five more petals for the large size all right so I have all of my large petals crossed and taped they're all going the same direction they're all taped at about the same angle so now I'm going to bring in my uh, large circle. And I'm going to take one of my petals. And you can, the easiest way I found to do this is just by standing it and putting your finger on, and then you, that leaves room for your other hand to put the tape. But what you're going to do is the very edge of your slit is going to go on the edge of your base and you're going to tape it on the inside. And I know it's invisible tape but I have taped it so, if you can see, I've taped it so it's just one right down the center, leaving my edges free. Now I'm going to take another petal and go directly across and tape it on the other side. So you can see I've got my two petals taped to the base right at the edge of the slit, right across from each other, and now I'm going to add my remaining four petals, two on each side, and I'm going to overlap everything in a spiral pattern. I'm going to take my petal and I'm just going to kind of slide it underneath and tape it in place and I'm going to take my other petal and it's going to go under one and over the other. So if it's under on the right side, it's over on the left side. This petal is under on the left and over on the right and tape them in place. So now I've got four petals taped in place, four out of six, and you can see that they follow a neat little spiral so far. I'm going to continue my spiral with my leaves on this side. 
Now I'm going to shimmy this under. And then this one is also going to be an over under. And that will complete the spiral so that I can run my finger around the base and not grab any of the um, pieces of paper petal. So I've taped everything down. I can in fact run my hand, finger around and not catch on any of it. Everything is taped in place. It is okay if you um, overlap, like when you're doing these petals, it's okay if your tape does get on the adjoining petals. So we're done with our big um, petals. We're gonna put those aside. Um, so we're going to do the same with our medium petals and our small petals, but we are going to cross the feet of our medium petals a little bit more than we did with our large petals, and we're going to cross the feet of our small petals the most out of all of the petals. Um, so if you look at if you look at the, the petal standing on a flat edge, the um, big petals will want to lay down more, and the smaller the group will want to stand up more. Okay, so for times like this, when you just start getting a little frustrated and it's not really working with six petals, uh, this is the smallest size. So what I'm going to do, and this is part of why I like the scotch tape, especially when you're starting out, is scotch tape peels off of construction paper very easily. Yeah. <laughs> so I am just taking off all of the tape that I had attempted to stick those down with. And I am going to make my, with this particular batch of petals, I'm going to make my middle one a little bit smaller. So I am still going to start with one petal taped down. So I can get the tape off my finger guys. And now instead of going across and trying to fill in petals, I'm just going to start on the side and I may get four petals, I may get five petals, I'm not entirely sure. So sometimes if you're having trouble getting your fingers in there, you can kind of like pre-tape the seat of your petal and then just kind of slide it in and press it down instead of trying to get a whole tape laden finger in there to make it try and make it work. haven't stayed as curled in the long run as they could have been. That is, I think, partly also, oops, there we go, 
All right, I have room for one more petal just to fill it in. And I'm just going to do a little shimmy. I'm sorry if this isn't quite on camera. I'm trying to see what I'm doing and get my finger working in there. Okay, you're in the wrong spot. So again, scotch tape, fairly maneuverable product when you're dealing with the um, with the construction paper. This one's a little bit out, but I can make it work. And again, I got five petals, not six. I'm not gonna worry about it. So now I have my three sets of petals. And to me, they kind of look like um, paper bowls. So I have my big bowl for all my stews, then I have my soups, and then I have my, I'm really all not, that, not all that hungry bowl. All I'm going to do, um, and this is where having glue does help, even if it's white glue, is you take your medium bowl and slide it into your large bowl. And just push it all the way down, spread your little petals, take your little soup cup bowl, put that in your medium, push it down. And if you had glue, you know, you just pour a little glue, then put your bowl in. And our flower is almost finished. And you can go back and just kind of use your fingers to recurl some of your petals so that they're nice and rounded out. I do recommend curling your petals because this one I made, um, it is using cardstock and hot glue, but I made it without any curl whatsoever just to see what it looks like. And I'm not sure how much goes out on camera, but in real life, it kind of reminds me of a cactus flower. Um, but it looks nothing like the rose petals that I got using the exact same paper, the exact same glue, the exact same method. So these two are both red cardstock with hot glue, and you can see what a difference it makes just curling the petals before you attempt to tape them on. Now, there's one last thing that, would, that will make our flower complete. We are going to make a center. So for me, I'm going to take the yellow from, the leftover yellow rather, from my large um, cutout. This is the one where I did not put any of my circles in. And what I'm going to do, so I'm actually gonna fold this back in half, is I'm just going to trim off the ends So that I have a long, long skinny rectangle. Now this rectangle is a little bit small for what I'm going to do, but it should still work. Um, you can also do this with a contrasting color if you wanted to have, um, you know, like a brown or black um, middle section on the folded side. I am going to cut, but not all the way through. And I'm going to do that to about the same level all the way along. So you can see that I have little slits, but it doesn't go all the way through. Everything is still connected. I'm gonna do that for this entire length. Please stand by. All right, so now that I have my entire piece cut, and again, I cut on the folded edge, but not all the way through, 
leave it folded. I'm just doing that to demonstrate. Pick an end and start rolling. I'm rolling it like this because I am keeping a finger on either side so that I don't end up with kind of like a cinnamon roll effect. I don't want the middle, inner middle poking out. And I'm just going to put a little piece of tape right there. Okay, so now I'm going to fluff it. I'm just digging my thumbs in and pulling out to the side to spread it out a little bit. And then all I have to do is a boatload of glue and pop it straight into the middle of my flower. And now my paper rose is complete. I'm going to teach you how to make a chrysanthemum. This is the template that I am using for the uh, chrysanthemum. The template as well as the um, way in which I'm doing this was designed by Noella um, on her blog, Anyone Can Craft. Um, so you can go to her blog and download a ton of a really nice, um, different shaped petal um, templates um, on her blog. Each leaf, or each petal size is overlapping. Um, so what I did is trace and then cut out the next one, trace, cut out the next one. I've cut everything out. And I am curling my chrysanthemum petals with my library card. So I'm just holding the bottom and then one, two, nice straight piece of paper, library card held at a slight angle. So kind of like you were going to spread something off except one, two, and I'm going to do that to the rest of the petals of this size. Alright, so no harm done to my library card. I can still use it to check out books. And all of my pieces are curled along with all of the other sizes that I did the other day. Now, cutting out all of the sizes for this, and this is, I think, only half of what you need to do this flower justice. These five sets of petals, there are 12 petals each, that took me four full pieces of construction paper. So I cut out a two and a half inch base circle and while I am good with the scissor, I actually did this using my, using the circle cutter we have for our button machine. And what I'm going to do is pretty much the same thing that I did with my other flower. So to try and get my spacing a little bit better, I knew I was going to have five petals on each side of my two middle petals. So I just kind of spread them around and then stuck a bunch of tape on. So everything's taped down. Now I think ideally I would have another set of petals this same size to go in between all of the um, previous layer, but instead, based on what I've already cut out, I'm going to add my second layer instead. And for these, I'm just going to go ahead and tape it right on top of the um, existing petals. 
You don't need to space these out too much because they are, I've already got my guide basically. I'm just putting them between all the other petals. And when Noella does this, she does use white glue and she just puts in like a circle of white glue, sticks all the petals down, putting in more glue as needed. I'm just using tape because I have it. And again, I can pull it up and reposition it if I need to. And ideally there would be a second layer of this size petal going all the way around to fill in the gaps, but I'm just gonna move forward. Next layer going in, and now the CDC does recommend um, not going visiting for Thanksgiving this year. I know I'm having a virtual Thanksgiving with my parents, and in order to make it feel like we're a little bit more connected, even though we are going to be over Zoom, um, we, my mother and I have planned a menu. So we're going to have to serve the same foods. If you send out either um, as a kit or just sending out a link to templates to all of your friends and family, you can make these flowers together over Zoom and then they can be um, centerpieces or they can be background art and then you know it feels a little bit more like you are together because you've got all the same uh, items around you. So I'm on my last layer now, oops I dropped the petal, and if I um, wanted to I do actually have some brown with me. I could have done this last inner layer in like a brown or you know any other similar color and then had my little center moment the same as we had for the rose. So what I want to do is curl in, especially this middle layer, I could have um, curled them a bit more with my library card and I'm just kind of pushing everything in and curling it up. And again, this is about half the layers that um, Noella, who made the template, recommends. And that is your chrysanthemum. Sometimes, small variations in how you create your petals can drastically influence how your finished flower looks. Because I didn't have a double layer of each petal, my orange chrysanthemum looks more like a lotus or a water lily. By using the same basic technique as the rose, but by cutting a different edge on the outside of my petal, I have a completely different looking flower. And by creating multiple flowers in varying sizes, and then stacking each within themselves, I have a giant fantastical rose.